starting out with our bell ringer for the day. Um, you could have actually picked a whole bunch of different numbers for this, but if you actually check it the way I say, which is to put down the bigger number first, 4 actually goes into 8, which means that you could actually use 8 as your number. Some of you might have chose 16. That's fine. As long as you did it right, it will work out. Um, here you end up with 24 over 4x, 40 over 8, and then 48. This turns into 6x equals 5 plus what? 48. And then 6x turns into 5 plus, well, I guess not 5 plus 48, it'd be 53. And then when you divide by 6, I think you get 53 over 6. Let me check that one more time. That would be 48. That would be 5. 53. Yep, 53 over 6 would be your answer on that if you did it right. But getting into what we're doing today, uh, chapter 4, section 3. Today is going to look at nonlinear patterns. Remember yesterday all of our patterns that we looked at had the same distance in between step 1 to step 2 and so on. Uh, you'll be asked to identify the pattern as linear or nonlinear. And then you'll be asked to create an equation to represent the pattern. Again, a lot of this has the, has the main thing of creating the equation. And so it's going to test your ability to think and to uh, problem solve here. Uh, first, we need to use the word or consider the word linear. Think about the word linear. First four letters spells L-I-N-E, which means that linear would be like a line. So a linear function would look like a straight line. So if they ask you if something's linear and it's not a straight line, then of course it's not linear. Uh, secondly, when you can consider the tables from yesterday, the common difference was the same. For example, this adds one, that adds, well, it says consider whether each one is linear or nonlinear. This here adds one, whereas this here adds two. The answer to this would be no, whereas this adds four. Again, adds four. The answer to this one would be yes. So, um, again, looking at the table shouldn't be that bad. You just simply make sure that you go through and check the differences as long as the differences are the same all the way through then it works. Uh, what we learned yesterday was to how to find an equation to represent the second table. Um, this one here. Today we're going to kind of look at how we create an equation for the first table. Keep in mind there are two patterns that we work with. One pattern is geometric and what this means is that a common number is being multiplied. Uh, this would be one of your first checkpoints especially if it's not linear. Uh, but you will notice the common difference does not get under control after a few checks. What I what I mean by that, you'll kind of see here. So look at a couple of examples as I work through them. So if you were to use the uh, distance check, this is adding 6. This is adding 27 minus 9. That's adding 18. This is adding 81 minus 27, which is 54. This is adding 243 minus 81, which is 162. And what we will do here is we'll check the second level of differences. 6 to 18 is a difference of 12. 18 to 54 doesn't look like it's going to be 12. It'll be 36. And then 54 to 162 is definitely something small, something silly. And even though it's a negative, I just typed it in backwards, but that is plus 108. And again, if you look at this, this is a difference of 24. This is a difference of 60, what, 72. And so, as I said, this, this doesn't get under control, which means that something's going on that we need to consider. So because this doesn't get under control, we need to look and say, is there a common thing being multiplied? 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. 81 times 3 is 243. And so anytime you have a common difference of 3, that is going to be your base and using x as the exponent. Why? Because 3 to the first is 3. 3 to the second is 9. And I'll even show you that part. 3 to the third is 27. 3 to the fourth. So again, whenever you have a situation where it's multiplying the same number, just put down that number, put a power on it. And if you had to adjust, then of course you go somewhere else off of that. But that's just being multiplied by 3 that would be what we are looking at is just 3 to the power of x. If you look at the second one, again looking at the differences plus 2, plus 4, plus 8, plus 16. This is plus 2, this is plus 4, this is plus 8, this is plus 2, plus 4. If you even notice it's just the same pattern going on over and over which means that obviously we're not looking at the common differences here. 
we want to ask ourselves if there's something being multiplied. 2 times 2 makes 4, 4 times 2 makes 8, 8 times 2 makes 16, 16 times 2 makes 32. And again, because it's multiplying by 2, use 2 as your base. Simply put the power of x and check to make sure everything works out. 2 to the first is your 2. 2 to the second is 4. 2 to the third is 8. 2 to the fourth is 16 and so on and so that pattern works for that. So again one of the types of patterns you're going to see that's called a geometric sequence whenever you just take the number in front and multiply it by uh, whatever is common we call that a common ratio. The second type is uh, taken to a second or third power and this pattern eventually has a common difference as we go further. Uh, consider that yesterday our common di difference was found on the first check. Uh, a pattern that goes to the second power is going to have a common difference on the second check. Thinking about that, a pattern to the third power will have a common difference on the third check. So it's not so hard to determine what the power is, it's just a matter of making sure you understand that if it's the first check, then it's linear, we use that number. If it's the second check, we're going to do x squared. If it's the third check, we're going to do x to the third. So looking at this, 4 to the 7 is 3. 7 to 12 is 5, 12 to 19 is 7, 19 to 28 is 9. Notice that our first check did not yield anything nice. But notice that as we check 3 to 5, that's a difference of 2, difference of 2, difference of 2. This means that we will start out with the power of x squared because it took us two checks to get there. Now, here is where you have to kind of uh, do a little bit of work because with x squared, you simply want to list the numbers that you would do for x squared. x squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and then list these numbers right beside it. So 1 somehow has to turn to 4. At the same time, 4 has to turn to 7, 9 has to turn to 12, 16 has to turn to 19, 25 has to turn to 28. And your job now is to look and see if there's anything you're doing to all these numbers to make it go there. If you think about it, 1 goes to 4, 4 goes to 7. It looks to me as if you are adding 3 every single time. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, 9 plus 3 is 12. And so that means that the pattern for this is, of course, x squared. But you're going to take those x squares and simply add 3 to it. So again, the first thing we noticed was that it went to the second check. That means it's x to the second. The second thing we do is we listed all the x squareds based off of these numbers. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. And then we simply put these numbers down beside it to try to analyze how to make all those numbers fit. That's kind of like our adjustment thing before. Uh, but just to make them fit, what did we do to make those fit? And again, what we saw is that we simply added 3 to everything. Another example here, so 2, 16, 54, this is plus 14, this is plus, I don't know, 54 minus 16 is 38. This is plus something even bigger, 128 minus 54, which is 74. And this is plus 250 minus 128, which is 122. So first check did not give us anything. Second check is plus 14, no, 20, 24 here. Uh, this is definitely not 24, 74 minus 38 is 36. 122 minus 74 is 48. So our second check didn't do anything, so that's our first, this is our second. Let's check our third, because after three you really shouldn't have to worry about it anyway, because I don't think there will be anything that deep. But if you look, 24 to 36 is plus 12, 36 to 48 is plus 12, which means that we will be doing x to the third as our uh, key part there. And again, anytime you have a x to the third power, you want to go ahead and list what's going on. So 1 to the third is 1. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 3 to the third is 3 times 3, which is 9, times another 3, which is 27. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 which makes 64 and then 5 times 5 is 25 which if you multiply again you get 125 so again this comes from me taking these numbers and plugging them in and then what I'm going to do is find my adjustment idea and try to figure out what we do to make these numbers into these numbers and 
And as we look at this, we have uh, 1 going to 2, 8 going to 16, 27 going to 54. Those are not adding, but if you look at it, 1 times 2 is 2, 8 times 2 is 16, 27 times 2 is 54, 64 times 2 is 128, and so on. So it looks to me like we're multiplying by 2. So what we're going to do is take x to the third and multiply it by 2. And so that would be what we end up with is y equals 2x to the third. So if we took 2 times 1 to the third, notice you get 2. 2 times 2 to the third, you get 16. 2 times 3 to the third is 54, and so on. So again, that would be your answer for that. So whenever you get these, list the numbers, and then write down the other part and see if it matches what's going on. Now let's look at some problems from the textbook real fast as we get ready to go. we got three questions to look at. Um, first thing is going to be error analysis. I don't really mind the error analysis part. I just like the fact that it gives us something that we can work with. Um, so looking at this, it says a classmate says a function shown by a table at the right can be represented by this rule. Describe and correct their error. Really the way you do any error analysis is you just work it out on your own. Forget about what they have there and then compare what you got to what they got and see what they might have done wrong. And so here, the first thing we do is we look at the differences. That is plus 1, plus 3, plus 5, plus 7. So obviously it's not linear. But if we look at this part, this is plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. And so since it took two checks, we're talking about doing a x squared. And so again, for x squared, we list all of our numbers. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. And then we put our adjustment, or find our adjustment by listing the actual numbers, which means we actually want a 1, a 2, a 5, a 10, and a 17. And when you look at these things here, you should notice that 0 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2, 4 goes to 5, and so on. I think that what we are doing is simply adding 1. And so our actual answer should be y equals x squared plus 1. Now going back, that's really the only thing they forgot to do is just forget they forgot to put the uh, second power on that x so that should be the actual answer that they had but the reason they messed up is because they forgot the x squared alright for the diagram below the table gives the total number of small triangles y in figure x what pattern can you use to complete the table represent the relationship using words and equation and graph. We really aren't doing words much, but we are doing an uh, equation and we're definitely not doing the graph on these notes. But I think that you should be able to kind of check that out because notice that they simply take the x value and y value and give you a coordinate, which means that we could actually place or uh, plot this if we wanted to. So figure one has one triangle and notice that it has three small triangles. Figure two has one, two, three, four triangles but with 3 each, 4 times 3 being 12, seems to be that pattern there. Figure 3 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 triangles, and 9 with 3 each would be 27. I would assume that figure 4 would have a fourth one here, fourth one here, fourth one there, and then another 4 going there, because it seems like we're just adding another arrow to it, which would give us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 16 with 3 each, would give me 48, which would give us the point 4, 48 as we filled that in. And of course, 5. If that if 1 had 1 going through, 2 had 2 by 2, 3 had 3 by 3, 4 had 4 by 4, 5 should be 5 fives, which is 25 triangles. Each one with three triangles each should give us 75 small triangles. And then, of course, we would turn that into 5, 75. But they want an equation for this. And so in order to do the equation, we have to go back to our numbers here and figure out if there is a pattern. So the first thing we'll do is say this is going plus 9, plus uh, 15, plus 21, plus 75 minus 48 is 27. So 9, 15, 21, 27 does nothing, but if you look, that is plus 6. This is also plus 6. This is also plus 6, which means that we are looking at 
x squared because we did get it to the second level of change. And again, keep in mind whenever we have a squared, the first thing we want to do is list what the squares are. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. And then we need to put it by whatever we actually do have to make our adjustments. So we actually have a 3, a 12, a 27, a 48, and a 75. Hmm. This doesn't make sense to me. 9 plus 9 plus 15 plus 21 plus 27. It seems like one of these doesn't fit the way it's supposed to, so it makes me think that we might have messed up. 3, 12, 27, 48, 75, which does make sense. I just don't know why that would be times 6, because everything else goes a different way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I don't know. But let's look back at this again and just make sure. So we got plus 9, plus 15, plus 21, plus 27. 9 plus 6, 15 plus 6, 21 plus 6. But it looks to me as if all you're doing here is taking most of these, except for that one. But let's see. 2 squared. I oh, don't know. I didn't do that right. That shouldn't be a 2. That should be a 4. That's what it is because I'm thinking everything else matched. That's because 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and so on. Now it makes sense because I'm looking at all these and recognizing that we're multiplying by 3 except for that one and so that's what it is. So we're taking everything times 3 which means that this should be our x squared multiplied by 3. Sorry about that but at least you do see that even people who've been doing it for a long time make mistakes and you just have to kind of slowly work your way through it and get back on track. 15 they want a pattern for this. I think the best way to do a pattern for this would be to make your table. Uh, 2, 16, 54, 128, 250. This is plus 14. I think that's 28. It's 38. 128 minus 54. 74 definitely not linear 250 minus 128 is 122 so definitely not on the first try second try gives us uh, 24 here 36 here I hope this is 48 which it is and then when you look here that's plus 12 and plus 12. And so this one took us three attempts, which means we are working with x to the third. Again, let's do this one right this time where we take one to the third is one, two to the third, just to make sure we're doing this right, gives us eight. Three to the third gives us 27. Four to the third gives us 64. And five to the third gives us 125. And again, after we've plugged in those numbers to figure out what those are to the third, let's look at what we actually should have. And when you analyze this, it's obviously not adding anything because the added, added distances are different, but it looks to me like we are at least multiplying. 1 times 2 is 2. That doubles up, doubles, doubles, and doubles. And so we're going to take our x to the third, multiply it by 2 and get 2x to the third is our pattern. So 2 times 1 to the third is 2. 2 times 2 to the third is 16. 2 times 3 to the third is 54 and so on. So there you go. And by the way, if you want to know how I've been doing those powers, it's using this caret key. Uh, 4 to the fifth power, you type the 4 caret 5. So you don't have to do this, which does give you the same answer, but it takes a lot more time to type in. So other than that, you know what to do on your Math Excel. Uh, get in there and try this out. This is the last lesson that we have this week, but it is probably the last tough lesson that we have because I think everything else kind of gets a little bit easier for the most part after this. So knock this out. Get to the quiz. If you don't get to see, that's fine. But like I said, just make sure you knock this stuff out as much as you can and practice, practice, practice. Good luck.